Hey everybody, this is Laura with Jot and Tittle Typewriters. Welcome! We've got a 1953 Smith Corona Super for you today. Here we go, so you can take a look. This actually looks really good. So this is the original, like, um, I don't know, brown, it's almost like a pewter. It's, it's brownish, normally I would say beige, but it has more of a gray to it. And then it has the green, dark green accents, the speed lines, um, even the handles and the back plate and the, um, the ruler down here, that all has that dark green and the logo. So this is very handsome. And it looks to be in pretty decent shape. There is some discoloration right here um, and a little bit over here. But overall, this is in excellent condition. And again, it's a 1953. This has a floating shift, and I'll explain that here in a second. But let's go ahead and take a look-see at this guy. So back here, you'll find your paper holder or your My Favorite Martian thing, or V for Victory, whatever you want to say. And then this is your whole carriage area. This is where all the action is. Your paper is going to go back here. But to move this carriage, there's a lever on either side behind the roller handles. Doesn't matter which side, just pull that in and just go back and forth. And the bell on this is so faint, you can barely hear it. So. Um, just so you know, um, if it was all quiet, you're in a room by yourself, all quiet, then you could probably hear it a little bit, but it's very, very faint. Okay, for your margins, you just press and drag. I use narrow margins for my typing demo, so we'll keep it nice and narrow. You do, this is not a computer, so you do have to set everything manually. And then when you get to the end, you're typing away and you get to the end, there's that teeny tiny bell. Um, we'll go off to let you know, hey, you're at the end of your margin. And then you just hit your return handle to go to the next line. It's going to advance either one, two, or three lines. Your line selector is right here. I have it on one, but you can decide how you want that to go. Okay. Also on this one, there is a little metal knob. See that right here? I'm going to show you what that does. So if you just pull that out, okay, so I pulled it out and it loosens that roller. And what you can do is if you need to line something up just right or do subscript, superscript, then that comes in handy. But make sure that you press that back in to re-engage the roller. You'll hear it click. It should, your roller should always click and have some tension to it. And that lets you know it's properly engaged. Um, if it's loose, that means you've either got your paper release forward or this, um, this is out, something like that. And so just double check that. Um, your, there's also on this one, these two metal, I don't know what they're called, sorry. There you go. And you can slide them in and they just, it just helps hold your paper down against the roller. Um, but those are there and sometimes they get in the way. Uh, so you just put them wherever you want. Okay. Now I'm going to move this carriage over to the left, pop open the top. And that's because this handle will get in the way of the cover if you try to open it, if it's too far over. Okay. Inside we have metal spools which means we wrapped extra ribbon on this. So it's like you're getting an extra ribbon spool with this typewriter. We just put in, normally the universal ribbon spools have about 20 feet. This will have anywhere between 48 and 50 feet. So you get double the ribbon. Woohoo! What a blessing for you. Okay, this is your escapement in here, and you'll see this says floating shift. Well, what is a floating shift? Well, that means when you hit your shift button, this escapement area moves versus on older typewriters, it used to be the carriage would move. And even some Olympias, the carriage moves. Um, and the benefit of that is it's not as heavy on your pinky. It's a little more pinky friendly. It's much lighter to hit that shift. Okay, so here is your spool. When it's time to change it out, you just pull it out and pop a new one in. 
very easy. If you want to keep your metal spools, you can just send those to us and we'll rewrap them with, with um, ribbon. You'll see that option under custom ribbons on our website. The link is in the description below or you can use a, a universal ribbon on here. When you do change it out, make sure black is on top, red is on bottom, and that it is threaded properly through all these little metal uh, guides. We have an up close image of this on the product listing. You will need the link to look at the images. So keep that link in the um, description below for the product listing bookmark it, and then you can refer back to that photo when it's time to uh, change out your ribbon. Now there is no auto reverse on these ribbons and so when you get to the end of the spool you need to reverse the direction because the end of the spool is not the end of the ink and so you reverse it right here okay so back and forth and you go back and forth many times before you need to change out this ribbon. Okay, for those of you who have one of these typewriters and you're wondering how old it is or any information, well, right here is a serial number. It's gonna be stamped on the left side in that metal frame, and then you can visit typewriterdatabase.com and look up some information on your typewriter. You'll see a little lever right here with some red numbers. That just determines how hard these type bars right here are gonna strike your paper. So this is just personal preference. Okay, let's go ahead and snap that back down. On the right side is your color selector. Right now it's on red, you can flip it up. Um, and it's a blue little dot, but it's black ribbon, obviously. The white dot is stencil, and that won't do any, you're not gonna type properly on that, so you will never use stencil. If it's on there, your typewriter's not gonna work right. So make sure it's firmly on red or black. Okay, um, like I said, here's the ribbon reversal. This is your backspace, and we're gonna go over the rest of this here in just a second. Let's go ahead and load some paper and do some typing. So I have a cardinal outside that's, um, <laughs> I don't know if you can hear him. Every time I talk, he chirps, and when I'm quiet, he's quiet. So we're having a little competition, but that's what I love about living in rural Missouri. We have a virtual bird sanctuary out right outside of our window here. You can see the lake right outside the door. And um, we have hummingbirds and blue jays and uh, cardinals. It's just a wonderful place. So he's having fun with me today. All right, let's go ahead and do some typing. There's no number one, so you use the lowercase L. This is a 1953. Smith Corona. Oops, so I made a mistake. What do you do when you make a mistake? Well, here's your backspace. But remember, backspace doesn't erase. You just backspace, make your change, and then keep going. This feels amazing, you guys. I really, the keys are nice and tight, really good bounce back. Um, it's just a light hand. You don't need a really heavy hand on this one, um, which makes it nice for those of us with more petite hands or for younger typers. Okay, let's go ahead and type. Um, also, there is a tab option. Here's the tab right here. If you want to set it, you just press down. If you want to clear it, you press up. So while you need a light hand on this, I will say you still have to press down pretty far. But it is um, relatively easy. Like I said, the I can hear the bell. It's 
super, super faint. I can barely hear it. So I doubt you can hear it on the video because it is so faint. But if you were in a quiet room, you'd be able to hear it. But um, just to let you know, uh, it's so faint that you may not hear it. So I would just, um, just so you know. Okay, let's do red. There's that bell, and I'm gonna keep going because that bell says, hey, you're at the end of your margin, but I'm in the middle of my word. So I wanna keep going. And now it's gonna stop on me. So now I hit MR for margin release, finish my word, and now I can hit the return handle. So, um, gosh, I really like how this typewriter feels. Um, a light hand, margin release, but you do have to press down. Further, I don't know how, I don't know the right word for it. You have to press down pretty far um, in terms of the distance, but you don't need a heavy hand on this one. Um, it's also a quiet typewriter. It, it, um, it functions more like a silent super, but it's just a super. Um, but it feels, it has that muffled um, um, feeling and sound when I type, so it reminds me of a silent super. Fantastic machine. This is going to be a great for active writers. Again, um, great collectible, iconic, just an iconic typewriter, and it's in excellent condition. You guys are going to love this. I mean, I say that about all of them, but hey, if you we didn't think you would love it, we would tell you, and we probably wouldn't list it, um, or we would just call it a budget typewriter. But either way, typewriters are so much fun and really help you to draw out that creativity and draw out those ideas that are inside of you. Um, and I just think everybody should have one. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it was helpful. And if you like this typewriter, uh, click the link below, go check it out. And if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you. Have a good day.